Sup, sup. Welcome back. I'm excited to talk about New Comic Book Day, February the 24th of 2021. But before I ramble too much longer, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, connect, or do whatever else you do on the platform that you're watching on. So I'm excited for this week because there's a lot of new books coming out. There's, of course, I think this is the last or second to last week of uh, Future State. And then I have a long list of awesome books from different publishers and genres that I'm excited to talk about. So up first on my list this week, we're going to look at the, the block of Future State books that are coming out. And um, the first one I want to mention is Superman, House of L, number one. I really don't know what this book is about exactly. I really don't know too much about it. Um, I've talked a little bit before about how I try to dodge solicits and and spoilers and stuff like that. So I'm excited to find out more about what House of L is really about. Um, but I'm excited for it. Aquaman number two is um, also on my list this week. I really enjoyed the first one. Um, I thought it dragged a little bit in the middle there. But overall, I'm excited to find out more about this Aquaman or Aqualad or um, also Aquawoman, the daughter to Arthur, I believe. Um, and the Cosmic Ocean concept was really cool. So I'm excited to learn more about what Aquaman is doing in Future State, but I really like what they offered in that first book. Batman Superman number two. Really didn't know what to expect from the first one. I've never read much Batman and Superman. It pretty much plays out exactly as I would expect. Superman is big and strong and powerful, but he's also kind of dumb and buys into some cheap ploy to get him near Kryptonite. And uh, so now he's weak and Batman should be stumbling upon his uh, wounded body. And I'm sure something will happen from there. Suicide Squad number two. I really enjoyed, well, the first one I was a little confused for the first half. And then the second half, it kind of came together in a way that makes sense. Um, and I think this is also connected to the Infinite Frontier relaunch in March. And so um, I think this is somehow connected to that Suicide Squad team as well. Overall, I enjoyed it enough that I'll be picking up the next one to find out more about what they were talking about in the first one. Superman vs. Imperius Lex number 2. I really liked the first one. I think this was probably the biggest sleeper hit of all of Future State so far. And I'm really excited to find out more about the Imperius Lex story. How they're going to tie Superman back into all of that. And um, just, I guess, some of that thinly veiled um, political commentary that was in the first one. Has me excited to see how they resolve everything in the second one here. Dark Detective number four. I'm pretty excited for this story because we're seeing that like Bruce was killed by one of the uh, Peacekeeper bots or whatever. Uh, Peacekeeper one. And so there's a lot of uh, questions about who that person is. But I think what's more interesting is that Dark Detective is Bruce Wayne being a detective but trying to solve the motive behind his own murder. And so I think that's an interesting twist on solving your own murder kind of stuff. And then the last book from Future State, I guess technically Future State, is Generations Forged. I'm really excited for this one because the first book we met, uh, I think his name is Commandy. Uh, he's kind of like a Tarzan-like kid, um, but I think he's also an adult or something. I'm not sure. He traveled through time. He's running from basically time getting erased. And so as he travels through time, he meets like Booster Gold and um, he stumbles into some other heroes and he moves through time and he builds this group that helps kind of take on whatever it is that's destroying the timeline. Um, and there's like some really cool stuff like they specifically pick 1939 Batman to be part of this team. So it's this very like weird team and the way that they play the characters, they don't play them for dumb or lost. They just play them for, um, you know out of time or whatever so i really enjoyed the way that we got these competent heroes but they're also like lost in the time stream and i'm excited to see how generations forge brings that all together and launches us into the infinite frontier the rest of these books are going to be kind of um it's an eclectic mix there's a lot of stuff coming out this week and um there's a lot of really cool books coming out so i'm excited to talk about the ones i know a little bit about 
spoiler alert, there's going to be some of these that I kind of don't know too much about right now, either because they're in number ones and I don't read solicits, or they're in a place where I'm not quite caught up yet. The first one is Nuclear Family. I believe this is an Aftershock book, which might be the main reason it's on my list. Um, but I also thought the imagery and the cover and everything looked really cool. So I'm excited to find out more about the Nuclear Family in uh, Nuclear Family number one this, uh, this coming week. And then the next one on my list here is Warcorns, Combat Unicorns for Hire. This series, I really enjoyed. It was launched kind of out of like the Franklin and Ghost universe. It's uh, Garrett Gunn, Source Point Press. It's really cool stuff. Um, I have all of these books basically because I got them through the Kickstarter. But they're coming out monthly now and you can pick them up in your comic store. I highly suggest it. If you like the uh, Franklin and Ghost type of humor um, and maybe like some spoofy um, over the top action and stuff like that. Warcorns is a great choice. I talked a little bit about Steambound number one. I think it was two weeks ago. Um, I have it, have not read it, um, but I do know that this series comes from Behemoth Comics, and they're kind of new in the publishing game, you know. So um, just like AWA, I kind of picked up everything from the beginning of AWA. I'm not as um, as big on AWA as I was whenever it was first coming out. And I know there's a lot of people that are really all in on AWA. But uh, Behemoth, I want to get on at the ground floor so I know what they're up to. I Breathe the Body number two is out this, uh, this week. This is Zach Thompson who did um, Undone by Blood, which should have a new art coming out pretty soon. And um, he also worked on, I forget the name of it exactly, but it's basically about this chick that like has a, um, like an AI made to be her life partner. And things fall apart. So I really like Zach Thompson for kind of like the horror vibes he has going on. Frank at the Form number two. I've had this for a while. This is Clint Bart or uh, Clark Bent and um, Jordan Thomas. They do a great job with this series. I've had it because of the Kickstarter for it. Um, it's being released now by, I believe, Scout. So if you're going out to your shop, make sure you grab that one. I really like Frank at Home on the Farm. It's a cool, weird story. Dead End Kids Suburban Job number two is out this week from Frank Gogol and Source Point Press. I really love the first Dead End Kids series. I thought it was a great little uh, three-parter. And what I've read of the Suburban Job so far, I really like the way it takes those same themes and kind of uh, revisits them in a different way. Nothing about Suburban Job feels like um, a ripoff of Dead End Kids, but it very much feels like it's in the same spirit. The Kaiju Score number four. This is another book I'm a little behind on. I've only read the first two. Um, I've been meaning to get around to the third one, so I'll probably just, um, you know, finish both of those together this week. Um, so far, I really liked it. I thought it was a great little story. I know some people weren't super sold on the first one. And I admit it probably isn't like the strongest book I've or series I've ever read, but it's got some really cool stuff that I like that I'm really enjoying. Crossover number four. This is kind of a big one for this week. And uh, this is Donny Cates doing this image book that's kind of like a meta crossover. Um, it's got like its own unique characters that kind of, um, and it plays into like, in these weird ways, it kind of plays into like the idea that there's a crossover with all these characters from different properties. I honestly don't believe we're going to see that. I don't think this is a crossover in the sense of characters. I think this is simply a crossover in the sense of comics and the real world crossing into each other. And I think he's using this as a reflection of comic book fandom and how how crazy just like the fandom and everything around comic books can be. And I think in some way he's kind of like dismantling the industry and the fandom and giving us a mirror to see ourselves in. So we'll see what happens. Really loving crossover so far. Department of Truth number six. This series has been phenomenal. I wouldn't expect anything else from uh, James Tynan, but uh, Martin Simmons on the art is absolutely awesome. I know some people do not like his um, his style of art on this, 
but i really love it it's got a certain abstract quality to it there's also like this almost like newspaper clippings imagery involved in it too um which i think kind of plays into the conspiracy element of everything so i really like department of truth i think it's doing special things i'm really excited to find out more about cole's story as well as um just like the conspiracies i like how some of them it kind of leans into the pop culture-ness of it and then other ones it really leans into the um like underground darker roots of it all so there's a lot to love about department of truth overall i'm really enjoying it and i'm excited for issue number six out this week usagi yojimbo there's two series i've talked a little bit about it there's wanderers road and uh then just like the regular idw title both of them have new issues dropping out the, dropping this week uh, Wanderers Road number four, Usagi number 17. And I just love the way they handle the storytelling. Stan Sakai does such a masterful job of telling these Usagi stories. And I love the way that they're connecting the past and the present and giving us both kind of back and forth. And then the last book on my list this week is Something is Killing the Children number 15. I don't think I really need to talk about Something is Killing the Children, but why not? Um, I've really enjoyed this series. I think it's so good. The way that Tynan handles this, like we're constantly seeing like this character progression. We've seen Erica showed up and she seemed like, you know, it, this is almost feels like the beginning of like a, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, a Metroid game or something where like Erica shows up and she's got everything she needs and she's awesome and strong and confident. And then everything is progressively getting worse Meanwhile, we see James is actually kind of starting to understand more. He seems to become a little more competent, a little bit braver. And so my hope for the future is that, you know, as all this stuff with the Order of St. George and the House of Slaughter starts to kind of culminate, that we actually get to see Erica and James stand up together and be like this awesome duo. So those are the books that I'm really excited about this week. I know there's a lot there. Even for me, this is a much bigger list than I think I usually present. Sometimes things get um, picked up later. I go to the store and grab them or whatever. I see them and I like them. But overall, I'm probably most excited for uh, House of L, um, Batman or Superman versus Imperious Lex number two, Detective Four out of Future State, um, and then just like regular all the other books. I mean. Clearly, Something is Killing the Children has uh, got my attention. Department of Truth and uh, Crossover. Those are probably the biggest books out this week that I'm most excited for. Um, so, you know, let me know in your list. what What is your list? What books are you excited for? Are you sticking on for Future State? How have you felt about Something is Killing the Children? And do you think it's going to continue on even farther down the road? And uh, what are your comments on any of these other books? I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that, um, you know, you you're vaguely familiar with so let me know what i'm forgetting on my list and uh, let me know what you're excited for and other than that keep flipping pages